have never faced anything like this. Let them come. Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, Maximals, and Terracons to Theorymus, the ultimate Transformers YouTube channel that covers everything related to the Transformers movies. And if you clicked on this video, you likely already know that it finally happened. After almost four years of waiting, we finally got another Transformers movie trailer. This is something us fans have been waiting such a long time for, and man, it didn't disappoint. If you haven't seen this awesome trailer yet, or if you just want to watch it again, feel free to click the iCard above. But for those of you who are still here, allow me to break down this awesome trailer and shed some light on all the little easter eggs and details you might have missed when watching. So sit back, relax, and grab your favorite snack since this one's going to be a long one. The trailer opens up with a guy stepping out of a Porsche 911 as it transforms into a robot. The guy we see is Noah, played by Anthony Ramos. All we know about him so far is that he's ex-military, good with electronics, a father figure for his brother, and is just trying to get by in life. The robot, on the other hand, is the heroic Autobot Mirage, who will be voiced by Pete Davidson. Mirage is well known for having the ability to create illusions, which typically either render him invisible or make him appear somewhere he isn't. This is something that we will see play out later in the trailer. Mirage's design is heavily based off of his G1 counterpart from the Transformers 1984 cartoon, instead of his 2011 incarnation from Transformers Dark of the Moon, which turned into a Ferrari 458 Italia. In the majority of Transformers media, Mirage would typically transform into a Formula One race car, and in the cartoon he was a Ligier JS11. However, for the Rise of the Beast film, he's clearly a Porsche 911, which is a vehicle he has never been before. This reimagining of vehicle mode was likely done since Formula Ones are far from street legal, and thus in a real-world setting, this would draw a lot of attention to Mirage in addition to going against the whole robots in disguise aspect of Transformers. Though not confirmed, this is the likely reason why he was reimagined to have a Porsche alternate mode, and it also could be an easter egg to Jazz's alternate mode from the Transformers 1984 cartoon, which was a Martini Porsche 935 Turbo. Now moving on from Mirage lore, let's assess the background where our heroes are at. As we can see, the place looks abandoned. On the left, we can see all these aircraft parts that have clearly been sitting for some time, in addition to another abandoned vehicle. We can also see this rusty structure that goes further back into town, and in addition to all of this, we can see foliage slowly taking over this part of town. Whatever this place is, it's clearly not visited much if at all, which can explain why Mirage would transform in the middle of broad daylight, since he knew that nobody would be in this area. Now something that is unclear to us at the moment is why Noah and Mirage are here. Personally, I don't think the duo is about to square off against a Decepticon, since the two don't look scared and are not on the defensive. Furthermore, Mirage is letting Noah walk in front of him, and if there was a present danger, no Autobot would let any human walk in front of them, and instead would do their best to protect their ally. As for what's going on here, I think the two are either meeting someone, or more likely are going to this location to collect and or find something. This is evident since the two are walking in this direction with no hesitation. Furthermore, Noah made sure to bring a bag along with him on this trip. This can mean one of two things. Something important is in that bag that he will use later, or he's bringing the bag along to store something. Now another thing that I want to cover is a cool detail that I noticed. That being when Mirage transforms, he makes sure to have his driver's seat stick out in order to safely and swiftly let Noah out, which I think is awesome. Now, the last thing to cover in this scene is that it opens up with the song Juicy by Biggie Smalls. This song is significant since it's telling the audience something. That something being that Beast Wars is back, baby. And if you didn't know that, well, now you know. As for those who might not know what Beast Wars is, Beast Wars was a Transformers cartoon that aired from 1996 to 1999. Instead of the Autobots and Decepticons, it was now the heroic Maximals who transformed into animals and the evil Predacons who transformed into reptiles and insects. Now, for the past six live-action Transformers films, no Beast Wars characters made their on-screen debut. However, now Transformers Rise of the Beast changes that precedent by having the Beast Wars cast finally make their first live-action appearance. 
So, if you didn't know that, now you know. The next part of the trailer has several title cards. Under these cards, we can see footage of what appears to be New York and shots of a jungle. New York is important since the story of the film is set in Brooklyn, and the jungle is important since it ties into Beast Wars. And when you put all the title cards together, they say, For millions of years, our world has transformed, but something else has awakened. As for what this is referring to is unclear, but my best guess would be that it has something to do with the Maximals, since in the next shot, we see a giant robotic ape jump down and bang his chest at two humans. This ape is Optimus Primal, the heroic leader of the Maximals, and in the film he's going to be voiced by Ron Perlman. As for the humans, the guy on the left that we see here is Noah, and the gal on the right is Elena, who is played by Dominique Fishback. All we know about her so far is that she is a researcher of artifacts, works at a museum, and that her boss keeps stealing her thunder. Now, in this shot, if you look closely, we can see that Noah has this glove on that slightly transforms when he points it at Primal. And thanks to some handy dandy set photos, we can see this glove in better detail. Now, at this point in time, it's unknown where this glove came from. We do know that Noah is good with electronics, so he could have made this glove on his own. However, this glove could be of Cybertronian origin, since we do know that the Autobot inventor Wheeljack appears in this film. Though we don't know the glove's exact origin just yet, and exactly what it does, it's only a matter of time until we do. Now, in the next shot, we can see the Autobot leader Optimus Prime telling Optimus Primal to stand down. In response to this, Primal tells Optimus that, I'm not the one to fear Prime, there is a darkness coming. In response to this, Prime lowers his gun and retracts his battle mask. Now, there's a lot to unpack here, so let's start with Optimus telling Primal to stand down. The first thing to note here is that Optimus is being voiced by the living legend Peter Cullen, who has voiced him for the past six films and is the original voice actor for the character. Now, another thing to make note of is Prime's updated design. Starting out with his gun, this is a weapon that we never saw him use before and it has some resemblance to Dropkick's gun from the 2018 Bumblebee movie. This begs the question of why Prime doesn't have his trusty Ion Blaster, which was the weapon that he used in the Bumblebee movie. And well, a possible explanation for this is that he lost it when he was attacked by the Decepticons. As we know in the Bumblebee movie, he dropped a gun when Ravage attacked him, and it's a later scene right here when the Decepticons charge at Prime. At this point in time, we don't know how Prime got out of that fight, since that was all we got to see of it. However, I believe that he lost his Ion Blaster in that battle, explaining why he doesn't have it in Rise of the Beasts. Since we're still on the topic of Optimus, let's compare this design to his 2018 one. Some of the major changes to his design is the addition of this sun visor, the silver panels on his shoulders, the shorter smokestacks, and this pretty sick Autobot logo that's on his chest which all come from his new Freightliner cab over vehicle mode. And interestingly enough, the Autobot hood ornament appears to be the exact same one that Bayvers Optimus had. And as we can see, these ornaments end up on the chests of their respective primes, which is just awesome and is a nice callback to the original trilogy Bayvers Optimus design. Some other changes are these parts on the shoulders being more sunken in, his thighs having an updated design, the Autobot logos on his shoulders being bigger, the arrows on his arms being redesigned, the addition of this textured piece on his belt buckle, and making his crotch, hands, and a majority of his stomach gray. However, most importantly, he now has a mouth, which is something we didn't get to see in the 2018 Bumblebee movie. And upon closer inspection, it clearly has taken direct inspiration from Optimus Prime's face from the Michael Bay trilogy. They are actually almost 100% identical albeit with a few changes here and there. But as a Transformers fan who grew up with Michael Bay's original trilogy, I'm so glad to see this face design make a comeback. Since we're on the topic of designs, let's discuss Primal's. And man, does his look pretty cool. Something you might have all noticed is that Primal looks all beaten up. This causes his robotic underframe to be exposed due to all the missing fur. This design choice is intentional since according to the filmmakers, in this universe, the Maximals have been on Earth for a very long time and the rust and missing parts are supposed to visually illustrate that detail. And all the Maximals in the film will have this same element applied to them, in addition to all of them having green eyes to help the audience know that they are the Maximals. Now, the last thing about Primal's design that I want to discuss is the logo on his chest. This is the Maximal logo, and it actually got a slight update for this film in order to make it look more modern. So with Primal's design squared off, I now want to circle back and speculate on what Primal meant when he said, I'm not the one to fear Prime, there's a darkness coming. 
Now personally, I believe that this darkness Primal speaks of is the Terracons, since they are the main antagonists of the movie. However, I also think he's referring to Unicron, the biggest and baddest Transformer to ever exist, since he has been hinted at to be the creator of the Terracons. However, only time will tell on this one. Now another thing I want to discuss is the size of the Maximals. In the Beast Wars cartoon, the Autobots were gigantic compared to them. However, now the Maximals are roughly the same height as the Autobots. This was likely done since a size difference of that magnitude would look strange on the silver screen. Hence why the filmmakers opted to have the Maximals and likely the Predacons as well, the same height as the Autobots and Decepticons. Now the last and final thing that I want to break down in this segment is why our heroes are in the jungle. And well, there could be a multitude of reasons for this. However, I believe that the Autobots need help from the Maximals in order to stop the Terracons, and so travel to the jungle in order to get their help. Primal, not expecting any guests, naturally defends his territory and his team, until realizing that Optimus Prime is with the humans, and thus stands down to talk with him. However, those are just my thoughts. What do you guys think? Now, with this section squared off, let's move on to the next part of the trailer. And here we see the Brooklyn Bridge and later Optimus crossing it. However, in the first shot, we can see this lightning in the air that seems to directly make the lights on the Brooklyn Bridge flicker. And on the bridge, we can see three cop cars driving in one direction with their lights on, in addition to an ambulance driving in the other direction with its lights on. As for Optimus, it's unclear what direction he is going. However, it looks like he's going the same direction that those officers went. Moving on from this shot, we get something more interesting. That being our first look at the heroic Autobot Scout Bumblebee, and his transformation. Now, if you look very closely at the start of his transformation, you would notice this disco ball hanging off his review mirror. This is an easter egg to Transformers 2007, since in that film Bumblebee had a disco ball hanging off his review mirror, in addition to an air freshener that said Biatch. And though we don't get to see the air freshener in the trailer, we do know that he will have it thanks to this handy dandy set photo. Only time will tell if he will have the lion plush as well. Another thing about Bumblebee to bring up here is that he still has his 1976 Camaro alternate mode, which he obtained at the end of the Bumblebee movie. However, his robot design has gotten a makeover. If we compare this design to his 2018 one, we can see that his chest has been redesigned and looks a lot closer to his Transformers 2007 incarnation. His arms and shoulders have also received an update as well, adding a bit more bulk to his design. His head has also received a bit of an update, replacing the silver parts with yellow pieces and getting rid of the silver trim on the head. Bumblebee is now sporting the same door wing design that he had in the Michael Bay films, in addition to that one shot of the Bumblebee movie. Lastly, his legs appear to be redesigned as well, and thanks to this piece of control art, we can see the full extent of this upgrade. His legs are now a lot more angular instead of being rounded off, and now his back tires are on the side of his legs instead of being inside of them. Now something I would like to bring up about Bumblebee is his head design. As you can see, he's missing some yellow parts on his head. That is because the shot cuts off before he can complete his transformation. Furthermore, if we look at the control art, we can see that his head is fully transformed. And this is most likely how it's going to appear in the film. Now a question you may have is why Bumblebee's design looks different in this film compared to how it looked like at the end of the Bumblebee movie, if both designs use the same Camaro as a base. And well, the reason for this is because the design that we saw at the end of the Bumblebee movie is the exact same design as the Volkswagen one. However, it had a modified chest, thighs, tires, and wings to resemble the parts you would see on the 1976 Camaro. At the time, there was no reason to make a completely brand new design for B if he was only going to appear like this for 19 seconds. However, knowing that Bumblebee will have a prominent role in this film, the filmmakers most likely wanted to update his design so it better matched his vehicle mode. Now, the last thing in this shot that I want to cover is where exactly Bumblebee is at. And well, he appears to be in some warehouse evident by the ceiling. It also appears to be abandoned due to the graffiti on the walls. As for why Bumblebee is here, I think this place is the Autobots' safe house. I believe this since Bumblebee is choosing to transform in this place during the daytime, evident by the light coming out of the windows. As we know, the Autobots wouldn't transform anywhere that could possibly be spotted by humans. And since this place appears to be abandoned, Bumblebee would know that this warehouse would be a safe place to hide out, since he wouldn't be spotted by any humans, despite there being daylight outside. 
And the idea of this place being the Autobots' safe house will become more prominent later in the trailer. Now, in the next shot of the trailer, we get to see Noah get inside Mirage. And he quickly learns that there's more to this car than meets the eye. Later getting into a police chase and narrowly escaping thanks to the car's ability to make holograms of itself. Now, there's a ton to break down here, so let's hack this up bit by bit. In the first part, we can see this beautiful shot of Mirage followed up by Noah getting inside and grabbing the steering wheel. This steering wheel shot is an easter egg to Transformers 2007, where Sam got into Bumblebee for the first time and saw the Autobot logo. Moving on from this easter egg, a question this segment of the trailer made fans wonder is if the Porsche 911 is Noah's car. And well, we don't see any evidence of a forced entry, and everything we know about Noah so far doesn't paint him as a carjacker. So until we get more footage, I think the Porsche is his car. However, this now sparks a couple more questions, such as how he got the car in the first place, and if he knows it's a Transformer. The former is unclear at this time until we get more footage, however, the latter appears to be explainable since we see Noah screaming throughout the trailer when the car drives itself, which leads me to believe that he doesn't know it's Mirage. Now, another question this segment brings up is where exactly Mirage is taking Noah, and well, at this time it's unclear. However, since Noah is teaming up with the Autobots, going into the jungle with Optimus Prime, and meeting Optimus Primal face to face, this means that Noah has to have some huge significance in the plot. Only time will tell what this significance will end up being. Now, another thing that's cool in this segment is Mirage's abilities. The first of which is when the police conduct a pit maneuver on him. Mirage is able to use his ability of transformation to put himself in the right direction. And I find it cool that the filmmakers are now utilizing the Transformers' ability of transformation to do a lot more than just transforming. We saw a lot of this in the 2018 Bumblebee movie when Bumblebee had to escape the cop, and when he had to fit through the door. Now another sick ability Mirage uses in the trailer is the power to create holograms of himself, which he uses to successfully escape the cops. And I absolutely love this since in many of his incarnations he had this ability, and now seeing it be used on the big screen is just awesome. Lastly, in this segment, we can see that Mirage is driving Noah into Brooklyn, evident by the Welcome to Brooklyn sign that we see before the cop crashes into it. So wherever Mirage is taking Noah, it has to be in Brooklyn. Moving on from this segment, the next shot of the trailer shows Bumblebee with an upgraded off-road vehicle mode. As for how he got this upgrade is unknown at this time, but it's rumored that he will acquire it later on in the film. Another thing in the shot that we see is a cheetah robot running alongside B. This cheetah is the heroic Maximal Cheetor, and his design is pretty faithful to his Beast Wars counterpart. And, just like Primal, we can see that he is missing the majority of his fur exposing his robotic underframe. And, just like all the other Maximals, he has green eyes. Unfortunately, his voice actor hasn't been revealed to us at this time. Now, as for where these two are heading is unclear. However, it looks like this area will be where the final battle will take place. But I'll dive into this later on in the breakdown. Now, the last thing in this shot to make note of is that this scene has been digitally altered to make Bumblebee and Cheetor run to the right. In reality, they should be running to the left. How do I know this? Well, in this shot, we can see Bumblebee's steering wheel is on the right-hand side of the car. However, if we look at the set photos, we can see that the steering wheel is actually on the left-hand side. As for why the editors digitally flipped this clip is unknown. From here we move on to the shot of a bird breathing fire preventing this Transformer from crossing the bridge. As for who this Transformer is, based on the red and blue color scheme, we can tell that it's Optimus Prime. As for the metallic bird on the other hand, that is the heroic Maximal Air Razor, and she will be voiced by Michelle Yeoh. As we can see, her design is pretty faithful to her Beast Wars counterpart. And just like the other Maximals we have seen so far, we can see that she is missing the majority of her fur exposing her robotic underframe, with her only having fur on her head, which is something that's strangely not present on any of her upcoming toys thus far. And just like the other Maximals, she also has green eyes. Now, something interesting about Air Razor is that she has the ability to breathe fire, which is an ability she has never possessed before. Now, some questions this clip brings up is why Air Razor is destroying this bridge that Prime is about to cross, in addition to why Prime is trying to cross it in the first place. And unfortunately, at this time, we don't have enough information just yet to come to a solid conclusion. Now, the next shot of the trailer has a lot going down, so let's break this down piece by piece. First off, we have Mirage dodging a boulder while being chased by a modified Nissan R33 GTR. This GTR is going to be the evil Terracon Nightbird. 
and she will be voiced by Michaela J. Rodriguez. Now in all Transformers media so far, Nightbird has been depicted as a skilled ninja warrior, with her origin typically being that she was built by humans and was turned evil by the Decepticons, or that she wasn't built by the humans and was just a mercenary who took no sides in the Cybertronian Civil War, similar to Lockdown. And it appears that the film will be using her mercenary origin. Now, another big thing that we see in this shot is two characters falling down a hill. We can easily identify the first one as Optimus Prime. However, we see this brown one falling down the hill as well. This guy is Scourge, the sinister leader of the Terracons, and he will be voiced by Peter Dinklage. Now, the reason why we know this is Scourge is because he will be transforming into the Mad Max-inspired Peterbilt 359. And as we can see, that truck is all rusty just like the armor we see here. Furthermore, we can see that he has orange eyes, which lines up with his appearance later in the trailer. So with all that said, this character has to be Scourge. And if you guys haven't noticed it already, for a brief second we can see him holding a gun in his left hand. Now the last thing in this section that I want to point out is this rock that Mirage dodges. As we can see in this shot shortly after the rock lands, Optimus takes a shot at it. Now, you could say that he was trying to hit Scourge and missed. However, I believe that he is firing at whoever threw that rock. Now, the reason why I believe the rock was thrown was because when Optimus falls, we don't see any rocks come down with him. The same case goes for Scourge. And when Optimus takes that shot, it's way too low to even hit Scourge. But it would definitely hit someone at ground level, which is likely where the rock came from. Now, the last thing in this scene that I want to break down is Optimus's gun. As we can see in the opening, Optimus's gun came out of his left arm. However, in this shot, it comes out of his right, which means that Optimus can potentially dual wield just like he did in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Now, moving on to the next part of the trailer, we can see a tow truck shooting a missile at a Transformer riding on a Volkswagen van. This GMC C70 tow truck is the evil Terracon Battle Trap and he will be voiced by David Sobolov, who has voiced several other Transformers in the past, most notably Death Charge from Beast Wars, Shockwave from Transformers Prime, and Blitzwing from the Transformers Bumblebee movie. Now, this incarnation of Battle Trap seems to be completely different from his G1 counterpart. Since he was originally a Decepticon Duocon that had two separate vehicles for his alternate mode, however now he's a Terracon who turns into a tow truck. As for who he's shooting at, the red and white character is the heroic Autobot RC, and she will be voiced by Liza Koshi. The Volkswagen van, on the other hand, is the Autobot Inventor Wheeljack, and he will be voiced by Cristo Fernandez. Now, something to take note of is RC's new design, and if we compare it to her 2018 one, it appears that she has a completely different CGI model. From the legs to the torso to the arms, everything has been revamped. If we take a look at her head, she now has this new visor, which is actually an easter egg to her Generation 1 counterpart that starred in the 1986 Transformers animated movie. Furthermore, her face looks a lot more humanoid, possibly to make it look more like her 1986 counterpart. She now sports an Autobot logo on her head and no longer has her radio antenna. Overall, I dig this new design for her, and I like how her head kinda looks like a biker helmet. This was likely intentional since she transforms into a Ducati 916 motorcycle, which is actually an easter egg to the RC that appeared in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, since that incarnation of the character turned into a Ducati 848 motorcycle. Now another cool thing about RC is that she uses her motorcycle tires to drive over the road. Now why is this significant you may ask? Well, in other shots of the trailer we see those same tires situated on her back. Just like Mirage, she is utilizing her ability of transformation in a different way, which I find awesome. Now, the last thing about RC that I want to mention is her brand new weapon. If you look closely at it, it looks a lot like the blasters that her Transformers Prime incarnation had, which is just awesome since Transformers Prime is one of the best Transformers shows. So seeing the filmmakers take inspiration from it once again is just incredible. And this isn't the last Transformers Prime inspired weapon that we will see. Now, the last and final thing that I want to mention in this segment is what happens to Battle Trap's missile. And, well, we see it fly past RC's face and into Wheeljack. However, it blows up behind them, so how is this possible? Well, in this shot, when we see the missile come in, the left-hand sliding door of the van is closed. However, once we see the missile explode, it is open, since we can see the mountain through Wheeljack's windshield. 
And little details like this are just awesome. Since the Transformers are using everyday elements of their vehicles to engage enemies and block attacks, which I just adore. Now moving on from this shot, we get a clip of Primal that seems to be a continuation shot of when he first encountered Optimus. Since we can see the same jungle he was standing in front of when we first saw him right here. And in this clip he says, of all the threats from both your past and future, you've never faced anything like this. Now, what could this possibly mean? Well, I think Primal is talking about the Terracons and Unicron, since as we know, they're going to be the big bads of the movie. However, what makes this statement more interesting is when Primal says, from both your past and future. Now, this part about the future is intriguing since according to Beast Wars lore, the Maximals are the descendants of the Autobots from the far future. This leads me to believe that in some way, shape, or form, time travel has to be involved in this movie and only time will tell how that will be tackled. Moving on from this, in the next shot, we get a clear look at Scourge. And here we can see that he has beaten Optimus with him about to deliver a killing blow. However, Bumblebee stops this by jumping in to save the day, but gets stabbed instead. After this, we see Scourge holding Bumblebee while charging up some type of weapon which he uses on Bumblebee in the next shot that causes a massive energy wave. Now, there's a lot going on here, so let's piece this together bit by bit. First off, when Bumblebee is charging Scourge, it appears that he's holding some type of axe weapon. And we can see this weapon again very briefly when Bumblebee gets impaled. Speaking of Bumblebee getting impaled, we can see that Green Energon comes out. This is important since it sets a precedent that Green Energon will be the color of Energon going forward for this continuity. It was hinted at in the Bumblebee movie when B stuck his finger in an electric socket, but seeing it here confirms it. Another thing in this shot that's important to take note of is that Scourge knew that Bumblebee was going to attack him, since he starts to turn around a split second before Bumblebee jumps in the air. And since we're on the topic of Scourge, let's talk about his awesome design, which takes liberties from his three major incarnations while having some new elements as well. First off, his blade weapon was surely inspired by his Cybertron counterpart, since they both have this spiky element to it. Second, his chin design appears to take inspiration from his Generation 1 counterpart, since they both have a delightful goatee. And third, his vehicle mode was likely inspired by his Robots in Disguise 2001 design, which turned into a Western Star truck. However, it also could have been inspired by Megatron's vehicle mode in Dark of the Moon, since it was also a rusty Mad Max-inspired truck. Another thing about Scourge in this movie is that he's now a Terracon, while in the majority of his incarnations he was depicted as a Decepticon. This can explain why his head looks like the Terracon symbol. Furthermore, I believe that the designers took inspiration from Tarn's design from the IDW comics when making Scourge, since he wears the Decepticon symbol as a mask, and the Terracon symbol looks like a mask on Scourge. A lot of fans have pointed out that this symbol looks like the face of Unicron, and if the rumors are true, this means that Scourge and the other Terracons will be created by the Chaos Bringer himself. And this concept is not far-fetched since Scourge was created by Unicron in the Transformers 1986 movie. However, it's only a matter of time until we know the answer. Now, another thing that I want to point out is that it looks like Bumblebee's battle mask has been slightly updated. This is most apparent with those parts on the side. But I cannot confirm this until we get a closer look at it. Now, the last thing I want to point out in this shot is that we can see Scourge turning his hand, almost like he's charging it up for something. And well, in the next shot, we can see that he shot something out of his hand at Bumblebee, causing a huge energy blast. And based upon the radiation that goes over the building in the background, it seems to be some sort of electricity weapon. After the blast, we can see Bumblebee partially go limp in addition to Battle Trap shielding his eyes from the blast. Now, this whole sequence begs the question of where exactly the other Autobots are, in addition to where this place is. And, well, due to all this damage around the area, we can infer that some intense battle happened here, which leads me to believe that the other Autobots had to be involved in some form. Now, you would think that five Autobots would be able to stop two Terracons. However, if Scourge was able to beat Optimus, then he could surely beat the rest of the bots, especially with the help of Battle Trap. Only time will tell how this scene will play out. As for the other question of what this place is, thanks to some set photos, we know that this is supposed to be a museum of sorts. And as we know, one of the main characters, Elena, works at a museum, so this place must have some significance to the plot. 
Another thing we can see is that this museum is in Brooklyn, evident by the Brooklyn Bridge in the background. Now, the last thing I want to address is the elephant in the room, that being if Bumblebee is going to die. And well, there have been rumors that he will be killed off and later resurrected, which is basically the same thing that happened in the Bumblebee movie, so I hope this isn't the case. However, we do know for a fact that this isn't the end for Bumblebee, since he does acquire an upgraded vehicle mode at some point later in the film. And as we know that vehicle mode has black side mirrors and off-road tires with black rims, parts that Bumblebee doesn't have here. Furthermore, Bumblebee gets stabbed in Brooklyn. We know this since we see the Brooklyn Bridge in the background. However, earlier in the trailer, we see B in what looks like Peru with Cheetor. So, based upon all this, Bumblebee will in fact survive this encounter with the Terracon leader. As for how he escapes with his life is unclear to us at this time. Hey guys, Editor Jason here. So, while editing, I noticed something really strange about Bumblebee's side mirrors. In this shot, we know he doesn't have his off-road upgrade yet and is still just a regular 1976 Camaro. However, he shouldn't have this side mirror design since when we first saw him, he only had the one mirror design, which matches up with the prop car. I'm not sure how we got the second mirror and why they have a completely different design, but I guess we will know when the film comes out. Now moving on to the next shot of the trailer, we can see the Autobots on top of a mountain in Peru. And here we can see how clean the back designs for the Autobots are. Optimus Prime is the most interesting to me since he's roughly the exact same as the Bumblebee movie design, with a handful of minor changes here and there. The reason why I thought it would look drastically different is because on October 4th, we saw a piece of control art for Optimus Prime that depicted him with the gas tanks on his back, similarly to how they were positioned on his original trilogy design. Now, the most exciting thing to talk about in this shot, which I deliberately saved for last, is Wheeljack's design. And unfortunately, this is the best look that we have, since we didn't get a frontal shot of him in this trailer. However, for what we can see, his design is really cool. The only thing that concerns me is that his head doesn't seem to have his signature light-up ears, despite him having them in the 2018 Bumblebee movie. And with his head appearing to be rounded off, it reminds me a lot of his Dark of the Moon incarnation where he was based off of Albert Einstein. At this point, we just have to wait for a frontal shot to know if he will have the ears or not. Hey guys, Editor Jason here. So we actually do now have an image of his face due to some leaked toy images. And well, unfortunately, he doesn't have his ears. And now instead has these nerdy glasses in addition to a mouth. I'm not the biggest fan of this face design, however, the rest of the body looks alright. But let me know how you guys feel about it in the comments below. Now, the last thing in this shot that I want to bring up is that Bumblebee is clearly missing. Now, he could be off screen, or alternatively, he might be dead when this scene takes place. Unfortunately, at this point in time, it's unclear where our favorite yellow Autobot is at. Moving on to the next shot, we see this parade. And here we can see two pretty interesting things, those being these two floats. And thanks to some handy dandy set photos, we can get a better look at them. This one in the back is a cheetah with wings, and the front one is a rhinoceros. Now what could this possibly mean? Well, as we know, in this trailer we saw Cheetor, who is a cheetah, and Air Razor, who is a bird. I believe that this float symbolizes them in some way. Furthermore, the other float we see is of a rhino. And in the next shot, we get a clip of the heroic Maximal Rhinox. And he will be voiced by David Sobolov. So clearly, these floats must have some connection to the Maximals. This is further evident since we know the Maximals are hiding out in Peru. And this parade is taking place there. And as we know, the Maximals have been on Earth for a very long time. So maybe the townsfolk know about the legend of these heroic beasts and are celebrating them with this parade. Now, in the next shot, we get our first look at Rhinox and he looks pretty dang close to how he did in the cartoon. And just like the other Maximals, we can see that his body has been weathered, evident by all this rust on him. And just like the rest of the crew, he has green eyes. Another thing to note about Rhinox is when he roars, he has what looks like to be fire in his mouth. And as we know, Air Razor was able to breathe fire. So this might mean that all the Maximals have the ability to breathe fire while in their animal modes, which is pretty sick. Another thing to point out here is that he appears to be alone in these ruins and he's yelling at something. Based upon this, I think a fight is about to go down, since someone or something is getting too close to these ruins that Rhinox is trying to protect. As for who's going to be the aggressor is yet to be seen. Now, in this next shot, we get this awesome transformation sequence for Optimus, inspired by how he transformed into G1 cartoon. However, what is more interesting is the place where Optimus is at. 
And as we can see, it looks like an abandoned warehouse. Due to the graffiti on the walls in addition to these wooden planks, these barrels, and all the rust on these beams. As for what place this is, I think it's the Autobots' safe house. Since when we saw Bumblebee transform, we saw graffiti on the interior that has a similar style to the graffiti seen on the exterior. Furthermore, we can see barrels and planks on both the interior and exterior of this place. And lastly, both places have similar uneven window designs. The interior has a pane that appears to be segmented five times going up, and another pane segmented four times going up. While the exterior has a pane segmented four times going up and a pane that's segmented six times going up. Another reason why I think this is the Autobots' safe house is because like I said with Bumblebee, Optimus Prime is choosing to transform at this place. This would mean that he would have to be certain that he couldn't be possibly spotted by any humans. And since we have seen two Autobots transform in this area, this makes me believe that this warehouse will be the Autobots' safe house. Now, in the next shot of the trailer, we can see these three meteors crash landing on Earth. These aren't meteors at all, but actually the pods that Transformers use to travel the galaxy. And we saw them being used at the beginning of the 2018 Bumblebee movie, when the Autobots needed to escape Cybertron, and at the end of the movie when we saw the Autobots land on Earth. As for who are in these pods, I believe the Terracons are, since their team only has three members, which matches up with the three pods we see here. We can also see that they are landing in a river in what appears to be somewhere in Brooklyn. Moving on to the next shot, we can see Optimus Prime raise his weapon and prepare to shoot at something while closing his battle mask. Now, if we look closely at this shot, we can see that Optimus says something, but we get no audio for it. It looks like he's saying stop, but we won't know until we get more footage. Another thing to point out here is where Optimus is at. Based upon the landscape, it appears to be somewhere in Peru. Another thing in the background to point out is this snowy mountain with clouds over it. This landscape appears to match up with the mountains and clouds seen behind Cheetor and Bumblebee, which means that these two shots take place in the same general area. Now, after this shot, it cuts to black and we hear Optimus say, Let them come. He says this in response to Primal when he told Prime, Of all the threats from both your past and future, you've never faced anything like this. As I speculated earlier, I believe that Primal is talking about the Terracons and Unicron. Optimus is just responding to him, basically saying that they will take them all head on. And this becomes more apparent since in the next shot, we can see the Autobots and the Maximals fighting the Terracons in an epic final showdown. Now, there's a lot of stuff going down in this final battle, so allow me to break this down piece by piece for you guys. The final battle shot opens up with Battle Trap shooting at the Autobots and Maximals. And based upon this short segment, we can see that Battle Trap is going to be very tough, since he tanks a direct shot to both his knees and chest and keeps on fighting. We can also see that his primary weapon appears to be this blaster. However, thanks to some toy renders, we also know that he will use a mace-like weapon as well. Another thing to point out is this flying purple and black Transformer. This is actually Nightbird. And unfortunately, we really don't get a good shot of her. However, interestingly enough, none of her previous incarnations were able to fly, making this incarnation the first. So I guess you could say that they're really putting the bird in Nightbird. Hey guys, Editor Jason here once again. And thanks to some leaked toy images, we now have a better look at what Nightbird will look like. And I absolutely love how she has this ninja aesthetic to her. And thankfully, her head design is pretty faithful to her G1 counterpart. Overall, this design is awesome, and I cannot wait to see it on the big screen. Now, the last thing that I want to point out in this shot are all these metal creatures that are seen all throughout the final battle. They appear to be very brittle, since we see some get killed in one shot. Unfortunately, we don't get a clear look at what these things are, but I believe that these guys are the Terracon army, since the Terracon leaders are charging them into battle. As for why we don't see them anywhere else in the trailer, I believe that is because they came from this ship, and we can see it in the background throughout the final battle. And this thing is absolutely massive and could easily carry all the Terracon troops. Now something I want to point out is that the Terracon horde that we see are very reminiscent of the Terracons that appeared in Transformers Prime. However, in that show, the Terracons were just dead Transformers infused with Dark Energon. 
Basically, they were just zombies. So it will be interesting to see how these guys will play out in the film. Now, in this shot of the final battle, we can see Wheeljack, Primal, Optimus, and Cheetor. And something interesting about Cheetor is that he has these dagger weapons in his hands, which appears to be a brand new weapon for this incarnation of the character. And since we're on the topic of weapons, if we take a look at Optimus, he has arm blades just like his Bayverse incarnation. However, the Bayverse design for the blades has been mixed in with the Transformers Prime design for the blades to get this awesome hybrid look. As you can see, it has the blue lights and silver body that the Transformers Prime Optimus had, while having the orange Energon tips that the Bayverse Optimus had. And being a fan of both incarnations of the character, this is just awesome. Now, another thing to point out in this shot is that we can see Nightbird, evident by these purple thrusters flying towards the Terracon Horde. And we can see Battle Trap smack in the middle leading the charge. Moving on to the next shot, we get an epic transformation sequence for Optimus Primal. And his robot mode looks awesome, appearing to be a mix between his Beast Wars and Transmetal design. We can also see that he has a faint shade of blue on his head, which is a nod to his Beast Wars design. Another thing that is cool about Primal is his iconic swords. And they have the same design as the ones that he had from the Beast Wars cartoon. Albeit now with a more movified look. He also is able to combine them into one giant staff. Now, this is an easter egg to his original toy. Since if you place the both ends of the sword into one of his hands, you can make a staff. And to my knowledge, Primal never used this in the show. So it's cool that the designers put this in as an easter egg for fans. Now, another interesting easter egg is the chain that connects the two swords. Now, this is something Primal never had before. However, the original toy had a flail weapon. And it seems like the chain from that flail has made it into Primal's sword so he can turn them into nunchucks. Which is, once again, awesome. Moving on from Primal, we can also see our C. And now we can see that she has two blasters instead of just the one. This is cool since her Transformers Prime incarnation also had double blasters. And since we're on the topic of blasters, if we take a look at Wheeljacks, we can see that it takes direct inspiration from his Transformers Prime incarnation, which is sick! Now, the last thing in this shot that I want to talk about is the robot mode designs for Cheetor and Rhinox. And, for what we can see, they look very faithful to their Beast Wars counterparts. I will need to see a little bit more of them before I make a solid judgment on their designs, but so far, I like what I see. Now, in the last shot of the final battle, we can see Nightbird, Battletrap, Prime, RC, Wheeljack, Primal, Rhinox, and Cheetor. Something interesting in the shot to take note of is that we see Battletrap take a direct hit from Primal's staff, which goes to show that Battletrap is going to be a true force to be reckoned with. Another thing that we can see in this shot is RC fighting Nightbird, which could imply that they are going to be rivals. And as for everyone else, it appears that they're attacking the Terracon Horde. Now, a question that comes to mind is where the final battle takes place. And, well, we can see that this area is very open with mountains alongside it. Despite the scenery being mostly grey, we do get some patches of grass, which looks very reminiscent of the grass that was behind Optimus in this shot. And since it appears that the Autobots go to Peru to team up with the Maximals, and since the Maximals don't appear to show up anywhere else besides Peru, I believe that the final battle takes place in some remote area of it. Now, the last thing to bring up is where exactly Bumblebee, Mirage, Air Razor, and Scourge are at. And there could be a multitude of reasons why they appear to be absent here. However, something we know for certain thanks to some set photos and videos is that Optimus has a showdown with Scourge in a Peruvian town. And it's possible that Optimus might kill him, thus explaining why we don't see Scourge in the final battle, in addition to explaining why Battle Trap is leading the charge. However, an alternate theory I have is that Scourge is still alive and he's controlling the Terracon ship, which forces Bumblebee, Mirage, and Air Razor to seal Team 6 him, thus explaining why those three are not seen in the final battle since they are hunting down Scourge. However, only time will tell where these four characters are at during the final battle. We know for a fact that Bumblebee won't be killed since he's the cash cow of the franchise. As for the other three, it's fair game. And it has been rumored that Air Razor dies in this film, which could also explain her absence here. However, as I said earlier, we really won't know where these four are at until we get more footage. Now moving on to the next shot of the trailer, we can see the Rise of the Beast title card. And something interesting to note is that it first shows the Autobot logo, then the Maximal one, and then a Terracon one before changing back to the Autobot logo. 
This suggests that the Decepticons and Predacons won't have as much as a role as we previously thought. However, it has been confirmed that both of these factions will appear in the movie in some capacity, either as maybe a flashback or a post credit scene. However, at this time, it's impossible to calculate how big of a role they will play. Now, moving on to the second to last shot of the trailer, we can see Elena hiding from RC, telling herself, This can't be real, this can't be real. Oh, it's real. This appears to be Elena's first encounter with a Transformer, evident by how scared she is. As for how she got into this situation is unknown. However, it appears that she must have somehow spotted R.C., forcing R.C. to introduce herself. This begs the question of why R.C. would even be in robot mode here in the first place. And, well, the background might be able to give us a clue. As we can see, there is this train track with brown and green grass by it. In addition to this rusted structure in the background, and, as we know, the opening shot also had this train track that had brown and green grass by it as well. If we compare these two structures, we can see that they have a very similar support beam layout. Which leads me to believe that the area where Elena meets RC, and the area where Mirage and Noah were at, are in fact in the same location. Whatever this place is, it clearly has something significant to do with the plot if two Cybertronians are walking around. Now, the last and final shot of the trailer is just a slightly extended shot of the opening scene. And here we get to see Mirage's face a bit more clearly. And from what we can tell, it's pretty faithful to his design from the G1 cartoon. Now, another thing that I want to break down is this film's tagline. That being power is primal. As for what this means, I think it's a nod to the Beast Wars cast that will appear in this film. Since without their power, the Autobots wouldn't stand a chance against the Terracons. Now, the last and final thing that I want to talk about is where this film falls in the Transformers timeline. And, well, this film is a direct sequel to the 2018 Bumblebee movie. Despite what others say, this film and the 2018 Bumblebee movie have zero connection to the Michael Bay Transformers films, since those five films are in their own separate continuity. And, the Bumblebee movie was a reboot of the Transformers film franchise. Overall, I'm really hyped for this film since it references so much past Transformers media. And unlike some of the other films that primarily focused on the humans more than the Transformers, I think this film will be majority Transformers focused. Which is something us Transformers fans wanted for years and only got a taste of four years ago with the Bumblebee movie. Hopefully, this is the direction they continue to take this franchise for years to come since Paramount and Hasbro are planning to make Rise of the Beast the first film in a brand new trilogy. And with that said, that was the complete breakdown of the Transformers Rise of the Beast trailer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video since it took me a very long time to make. So if you could comment down below saying you made it to the end, that would truly mean a lot. I make Transformers content like this all the time, so if in-depth analysis on Transformers is your jam, then feel free to check out my channel. Now, before I go, I want to say thank you to all my wonderful Patreons and channel members for supporting my channel. You guys are the reason why Theorymus has continued to get bigger and better, so a big fat thank you to all of you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving a like rating or hitting that subscribe button below. And with that said, hit that outro.